Part of me wants to call this a work of modern art. The other, more practical part of me wants to call it a 24-bit tri-state output board. So what you have is 24 red LEDs and 24 blue LEDs. For each pair, it represents one input digital signal. Red will be lit up if the signal is high, blue will be lit up if the signal is low, and neither will be lit if there is no signal. It could be connected to a high impedance tri-state input mode microcontroller pin, or it could just have nothing plugged in. So the benefit is any that I'm not using are automatically just turned off. I'm using a bunch of op amps as comparators here. And the benefit of having both a high and a low light I think it makes it more clear which lights represent which signals and which ones are just off. And also, if you can't see the difference between red and blue, you can just look at which one's on top and bottom. So no doubt people will look at this and say that I'm absolutely insane and this was a stupid thing to do. I don't care because it was fun. I am proud of this. I'm not proud of the zip ties. It's actually mounted to wood with zip ties. I want to fix that later and make that better, but for now, it's good enough because I've put enough time in this board. So now let me show you what I did. So here you can see it better. It's a piece of wood and the board is zip tied. I was originally just going to have it stand up, but it turned out to be unbalanced. So it was falling over. So I just use zip ties for now. I'll do something better in the future, but I was able to put it so that it's not really blocking the lights. So you can see I've got the, and I'll go over the circuit in a minute, but let me go over the physical part first. So you've got the red LEDs and the blue LEDs. You've got their emitter resistors. You've got NPN and PNP BJTs, and I use both because I have both and I don't want to run out of one or the other. So I, I try to use them equally because I have equal numbers. And then these are a bunch of op amps. Each op amp has two op amps in it. So I've got 24 chips for the 48 LEDs. And here's the back of it. It's actually nine proto boards that I saw. So this is just big copper wire. This is like industrial wire. It's really stiff. So I, I don't know if you can see, like on proto boards, you have these little pads here, right here. I just used those pads and I soldered uh, three by copper along those pads. And yes, it took, it was quite an effort because this, this giant copper wire just heat sinks it away. Luckily, I have a very strong soldering iron, but you basically have to heat up the whole copper wire <laughs> before the solder actually adheres, but it adhered. And then I stuck all of those together with horizontal pieces. So that's how I got nine proto boards in one. And then I made a plate of spaghetti with it. So the entire circuit doesn't fit on this board. So I have two little auxiliary boards. And also this allows me to have a board to the side to plug in my signals so that I'm not trying to plug signals into this. And also, I didn't want it coming out the front because that would not be aesthetically pleasing because, see, I did little, little, little symmetric bridges. I, it's so pretty. I love the symmetry. Symmetry is wonderful. Anyway, so this one does the actual comparing. It takes the input voltage, compares it to reference voltages, and then decides what LEDs to light by deciding which transistors to turn on. This board has a USB cable this is a USB cable. It plugs into a charger. And that's another benefit. Uh, this many LEDs takes a lot of power. Hundreds and hundreds of milliamps. I mean, it's not a full amp, but still, it's hundreds of milliamps. So it has its own USB power, and then the signal it draws almost no current from the signal, but it's, it's self-powered. So I've got USB power coming in, and then it exports... USB power and signal power and all that, and creates the reference voltages here. Again, I'll go over the circuit in a minute. And then here I've got voltage dividers with the actual signals. So these are connected to the op amps on the board, and these are connected to my breadboard. These are the signals coming in. So here's a good overhead view. So here on the breadboard, I supply the power and the signals, and I've got an Arduino driving it. That's what the video was. It was just randomly setting them high, low, and off. Actually, I used two Arduinos because it was easier. Here's a, here's a better view. It looked a lot worse before, but I trimmed the... I trimmed the wires a bit. I wanted to get this closer. Uh, eventually, I want to get rid of the zip ties and mount it better. And I want to actually trim the wires and solder them in instead of using this header, get it, you know, tighter and closer and cut off some of this wood. But like I said, I've worked on this long enough. And you can see my other board over here. And here's another angle of how I've got all the signals plugged into a breadboard for easy use. So here's the actual circuit. This is the supply board where it takes USB power and creates the reference voltage. So it's this one. So there's the USB and there's 
the reference voltage. The second one is the signal board. This is just one of them because there's 24, but they're identical. So that's this board where you've got the voltage divider signal in and signal out. And then the final one, this one, you so see you get the LEDs and the op amps. That one is the board itself, this one. So let's go over them one by one. So I've already gone over what's going on in a previous video, but basically to detect tri-state with no microprocessor, you can use this circuit. A high is going to give you a high, a low is going to give you a low, and if you don't have a signal, then the voltage divider is going to give you half. These resistors, the value doesn't matter, I just pick big ones because I don't want to draw power from the signal, but refer to my previous video on tri-state detection. But this voltage divider, when there's no input signal, is going to give you half the supply, half the signal. So then this gives you two-thirds and one-third. So you can compare 100%, 50%, and 0% to 33% and 67%, and you can tell whether there is a high signal will be in here, a low signal will be in here, and no signal will be in here. And so you can drive LEDs that way. So we have USB power, and I export USB power, and I've labeled it C and D. The plus in the ground is signal power. It's a completely separate power. It does not have to be the same voltage. It, it can be a completely separate voltage. That's another benefit here is I know this is 5 volts, so I could size the resistors properly and so forth to get the brightness I wanted. But also, I don't draw any power from the signal. So you can plug this from an Arduino and it's going to draw, you know, a milliamp. So the signal voltage and ground comes in and then is put out again. This is, this is exported on different pins to be used by the second board. And then it's a simple voltage divider that exports two-thirds signal and one-third signal. So that's all that is. So I've got USB power in. Here's the three resistors that are exporting the two-thirds and one-third. And then I've got the screw terminals that give you the USB power, the two-thirds, one-third, and then the signal voltage which comes in here and then is exported over to the sideboard, which is this one. I use the signal voltage for this voltage divider and all of these voltage dividers so that everything's consistent. So the signal comes in, the signal goes out, and then you've just got the, see the G and H exported signal voltage? So G and H just does a voltage divider of a half when there's no signal. So that's what this board is. The signals come in from outside and they go to the board, and in the meantime, if there's no signal, then the voltage divider is going to supply half. If there is a signal, the voltage divider does nothing but waste power because the signal overrides the voltage divider. Because the signal is shorted, input and output are shorted together here, so less than an ohm of resistance. So the voltage divider does nothing to the signal. And then there's 24 of those, and finally the exported signal and the USB power and the reference goes to the board itself. So the board itself has the BJTs, LEDs, resistors, and op amps. So the signal comes in and it goes to two separate op amps. One of them for the red LED and one of them for the blue. So the top here is the red one, the bottom here is the blue. E is two-thirds. So if the signal is high, then it goes into the positive of the comparator, the non-inverting of the comparator, rather. Two-thirds goes into the inverting of the comparator. So you've got 100% signal voltage and 67% signal voltage. 100 is greater than 67. And then you've got your open loop gain of stupid. So this is definitely going to be high to turn on the base emitter of the NPN. C and D are just the USB power. C, USB power, C and D. So the op amps are being supplied by C and D and so are the LEDs and transistors. The signal voltage is L, E and F. So 100% versus 67%, if the signal is high, then this op amp gives a high, which turns on the NPN. To save components, I just used emitter resistors. It just, it makes it smaller, it makes it easier. Because all you do is use a smaller resistor. There's a voltage drop across the base emitter junction that reduces the voltage drop across the resistor, which means you can use a smaller resistor to get the brightness you want, because the brightness is based on the current. So it's just a simple emitter resistor LED driver. And then we're connected to low here. So there you go. If the signal is low, then zero is going to make this off. And if the signal is tri-state or not connected, then you're going to have, you know, 50% versus 67%, and it will still be off. On the other end, you have the signal going into the non-inverting of this one and one-third. So if the signal is high, you'd have 100%. If it's tri-state, you'd have 50%. But 
the non-inverting has 33%. So anytime the signal is higher than one-third of the signal voltage, then the op-amp once again is high, but this is a PNP, so that turns the PNP off. If the signal is low, then you've got 0% versus 33%, which is going to drive this output to zero, which is going to turn the PNP on. Here's the emitter resistor, the LED. Oh, I have it backwards. Whoops. <laughs> This is high. This LED, I, I, people have probably been screaming at me. Yes, this LED is backwards. You get the idea. You know what I meant. Whoops. Anyway, so C is high. This LED is backwards. <laughs> and it goes through the emitter of the PNP and out low and out low there. Doggone it. You know, this. I actually redid this because I forgot to add the little arrows to indicate what's coming in and what's going out. <laughs> and then I did this. Oh, well, you get the idea. But that's it. So it's a lot of stuff going on. If this was a printed PCB, it obviously would be one piece. You'd only see the LEDs. All of this would be hidden and it wouldn't matter. It'd be in a box. But the great thing is it does allow you to use a different signal voltage than the USB voltage. So you could use a 3.3 volt signal voltage if you want. So the, the LEDs are always going to be a consistent brightness and you don't have to worry about power consumption. And it's combinational. As in there's no microprocessors, there's no square waves, there's no nothing. There's a pro You've got a propagation delay, obviously, from when a signal changes. From when a signal changes, goes through the voltage divider here, then goes into this circuit and goes to the comparators and the transistors and the LEDs change brightness. So that's going to take some time on the order of microseconds, obviously. So from a human standpoint, there's no delay. But like I said, it's combinational. So there's no... There's no Arduino Uno in this. It's just, you know, the, the, the chips are doing the work. And I love it. I don't care if everybody thinks that I'm insane. Yes, this took me, like, a week. <laughs> I mean, not... This was... I was doing more than just this during the week, but still, like, this was not quick. But here's the thing. Here's the thing to keep in mind. This was a learning process. It's not just that I took a week to make this board. If I had just taken a week to make this board, it would have been stupid, quite honestly, unless I liked it for the art value. I do think it's artful. But... The point is, I learned about soldering large pieces of copper. I learned about protoboards. I learned about op amps and, and wiring. And I had to, I burned a couple LEDs and had to replace them. So I learned desoldering and solder sucking. I learned a million different things about electronics making the board. So over the course of the week, this was a profitable experience in every way. I could throw this board in the trash right now and I would still have value from this exercise because I learned. On the other hand, I'm not going to throw it away because this in addition to the previous two boards, is going to allow me to demo chips and signals and circuits very easily for the camera. So that's going to be cool, and those will be upcoming videos. In the future, when I talk about a chip, I will be showing it with these items, and hopefully people will comment and say, oh, that's a neat board. Where'd you get that? <laughs> or maybe they'll start calling me Dr. Frankenstein. Either way, we're going to have some fun. So until then, I'll be seeing you.